okay so in the last lecture we had uh, seen the concept of an electrodynamometer type instrument so a brief recap so in an electrodynamometer instrument you have two coils one is the fixed coil one is the moving coil both are being powered by currents uh, that is the both these currents are related to the quantity being measured uh, as opposed to the case of a moving coil instrument or a moving an instrument where only one of the components is one of these two components is powered by the quantity being measured okay so since we are talking about watt meter let's look at what is the um, power measurement and what what is actually being measured in a watt meter okay so we know that the expression for an instantaneous power is v times i and in case the supply is uh, sinusoidal then the voltage and current can be given by two uh, expressions of this form and uh, obviously here we are assuming that the current is lagging the voltage by a phase difference of phi now over one cycle the average power can be calculated by this expression and now if we take the vrms is the rms value of the voltage v and similarly for i we know that vrms is uh, v the maximum value by root 2 and from that we will be able to see that the average power p is vrms and irms times cos phi where phi is the phase difference so average power in in case of uh, sinusoidal waveform is given by vrms irms times cos phi okay now let's say that if we a uh, wattmeter can actually um, give a reading that is related to this expression so the desired expression is sometimes something like vi cos phi and whether theta is really related to this whether the theta that the wattmeter produces can be related to this that is the question that we want to answer okay so in case of a electrodynamometer wattmeter we use the electrodynamometer instrument with a certain uh, minor modification one is since the um, we need so in a in a electrodynamometer instrument you have two currents okay and fortunately see the re deflection is proportional to i1 i2 cos phi into dm by d theta okay now where uh, so rather than i1 i2 let us say that i fixed coil and i moving coil okay now the fixed coil is made of a thicker um, gauge of wire and and the moving coil is made of a thinner gauge of wire okay so the moving coil the thicker coil has less resistance and more current carrying capacity and the moving coil has more resistance and uh, since it is thin then it can carry less current okay so this seems ideal that the fixed coil be used so the current being measured the current in this vi in the power vi the current flows through the fixed coil and the voltage or current proportional to voltage flows through the moving coil okay so with this in mind the fixed coil is connected in series with the load so that the current proportional to the load current flows to the fixed coil 
and for the same reason the fixed coil is called as a current coil the moving coil is connected across the load or in parallel with the load and therefore the current proportional to the load voltage will be flowing through the mix, uh, uh, moving coil and that's why the moving coil is also called as a pressure coil in case of the wattmeter or the electrodynamometer instrument in this case okay uh, uh, so now as we have seen that the torque that is produced and the deflection that you have will be proportional to the current in the fixed coil the current in the pressure coil the current in the current coil cos phi and dm by d theta okay uh, now if you assume that the impedance of this pressure coil is very close to a resistance that is done by adding a very high value series resistance then we can say that the torque that is produced is approximately vi by r where r is this resistance times cos phi into dm by d theta in addition if we assume that dm by d theta is just uh, linear in this in a in a range of interest then we can say that the deflection is uh, proportional to the power consumed by the load so you would have theta rather what you have here is tau d is proportional to uh, v i cos phi and which actually means that k theta is proportional to this thing k theta will be equal to some g times v i cos phi or you get theta being proportional to v i cos phi okay uh, and so fine so what you have is that the scale is now linear in case of watt meter the scale of an electrodynamometer instrument would be linear or it can be made linear okay however there are some errors that can keep that can creep in in the electrodynamometer type instrument or when you are using in the as a, as a watt meter and uh, and it comes from the typical construction and some assumptions that are being made while we uh, uh, compute the while well, we make the reading for the watt meter okay so these are the errors so severe error that can be present we will look at it one after another okay so first let's look at the pressure coil in, uh, inductance we had assumed that in the pressure coil we have a, a thin coil a thin uh, moving coil being connected in series with a resistance r okay and we have assumed that this let us say this is l the inductance is l so what we have assumed is that r plus j omega l the actual inductance is approximately this uh, actual impedance is approximately the same as r okay however uh, because of this inductance the current through this uh, through this coil the i pressure coil okay and the voltage in the pressure coil are not in phase so v and i have a phase lag so i lags uh, v by say an angle beta okay and we have assumed that by assuming that r plus j omega l is equal to r we assume that beta is approximately zero but this is not true and maybe maybe if the if you have if it is not properly compensated or taken care of maybe this can cause errors so that is the error due to the pressure coil inductance so if we have the pressure coil uh, if we have we assume that this g omega l okay the effect of this is uh, significant what would happen the the result is that the torque is now not vi by r uh, cos phi 
it is this expression okay so one thing is that what we had was we had assumed that this is vi by r cos phi dm by d theta okay but actually it was i pressure coil i mo uh, i current coil by z where z is the impedance of the pressure coil times cos phi into dm by d theta okay uh, not even cos phi here okay so what let me again write it so what we assumed is this is uh, we needed vi cos phi dm by d theta and what we are getting is from the watt meter is i pressure coil i current coil cos of phase difference between them into dm by d theta okay now i pressure coil okay is actually v by z okay uh, into and this thing is the phase difference is now cos of phi minus beta okay but z is r by cos beta so you can write this expression okay now now the so the ratio of the true the actual power to the wattmeter reading is this ratio and uh, you'd see that no even though beta is low the value of beta beta is close to zero okay now as phi tends to pi by 2 that is as the load becomes more and more of a low power factor uh, this expression this ratio shoots up or rather not shoots up it, it goes down it goes down so what you would end up with is that the watt meter gives an excessively large reading when the actual power consumed is small in case of low power factor uh, case okay so a correction so first of all a correction needs to be incorporated and this correction becomes larger and larger in case of a low power factor case so an appropriate compensation needs to be made so that this correction uh, can be eliminated okay let's say what uh, can be done so we had this frequency dependent uh, impedance in case of a moving ion instrument also so we would use a, a similar strategy here also so a part of the series resistance has a shunt capacitance across it okay so this is the entire series resistance a part of it has a shunt cap capacitance across it now the overall <coughs> resistance of the pressure coil path is given by this one this expression and if we assume that the frequency of operation is such that uh, we can ignore this term omega square sorry not this term the denominator term okay if we can say that omega square c square r square is much less than one then the uh, impedance can be approximated by this expression okay and that has this r cancelling out and the reactance part being uh, very cleanly written and now if this capacitance can be chosen in a manner such that l minus cr square goes to zero then the overall impedance of this path becomes a resistance only it becomes frequency independent so the compensation or the correction factor goes to zero now the thing is that omega should be in some range that is the 
assumption that we are making that omega square c square r square is much less than 1 okay and from that we can see that the reading watt meter reading becomes frequency independent over that range so next we have the connection dependency okay so this is so what we needed was that the current coil in should be connected in series with the load and the pressure coil is connected parallel okay there are two ways that can be connected in this way in this way so this is a uh, source supply side connection where the pressure coil is connected towards the supply side and this is the load side connection where it is connected to the other side okay now Uh, if we connect the pressure coil towards the supply side then the uh, what do you call the current flowing through the pressure coil sorry the voltage across the pressure coil is the voltage across the current coil and the voltage across the load okay so you have the uh, actual watt meter reading plus the loss in the current coil the power loss in the current coil being the actual so this is Okay, uh, so let me again go to that. So when you connect the pressure coil towards the uh, supply side, uh, what you have here is that the watt meter reading is actually the load, the reading is actually the <coughs> power consumption by the load plus the loss in the current coil okay on the other side when you have this case you have the current flowing through the pressure coil being the load current so you have the current going flowing through the current coil is the current flowing through the pressure coil and the actual load current so in this case you have the reading is actually the load plus the v square by r loss in the pressure coil so in both cases you have a problem okay so there is no particular solution for this however something can be made some depending upon the usage uh, we can use we can choose one of the connection depending upon where you are using it so let's look into that aspect okay so what you have here is that when i square by r is i sorry i square r is low that is when the current is low you use the configuration where the uh, pressure coil is connected towards the supply side okay so that the i square r losses are low in the current coil and so this is used for low current situations low load current situations okay on the other hand when you are connecting on the other or uh, towards the load side what you assume is that the current this is used when the current flowing through the load is higher okay and it is typically used in this situation and it is also used in situations where the supply is constant so we if, you are, if you have a constant supply and you are really sure about what is the pressure coil uh, resistance or pressure coil inductance you can actually figure out what is v square by rpc and from the reading you can separate you can subtract this factor out and get the actual load reading 
So note that in this case, even though V square by RPC may be a little higher, okay, since it is a known factor, you can you can have an accurate reading. Okay. In in addition to these two factors, you can also have other sources of error uh, because of the magnetic fields that are generated, the electrodynamometer what in, uh, type uh, what meter is uh, subject to eddy current effects in any metallic part that is present in the instrument, and if there are any metallic uh, parts then they can interact with the coil and they can distort the magnetic fields produced in the coil and, and of course this can cause errors uh, and uh, since the magnetic fields themselves are very weak they are susceptible to stray magnetic effects however shielding particularly with uh, laminated metal uh, will cause some will will give some protection against this uh, stray magnetic fields and in addition to that because of la if, if, if the formers are laminated then you can even reduce the ad current effects or without causing much fd current effect okay anyway what you have in an instrument in this instrument is you have this moving uh, coil and a moving assembly that itself is a mechanical object and since it's a mechanical object, it will have a mechanical resonant frequency, mechanical natural frequency. And if the supply frequency is close to that, there can be effects of vibration, okay, which will make uh, the reading difficult to read. So you the reading can be, um, what do you call, very close to the actual reading, the needle will vibrate a little. And so you can, you cannot really differentiate or you cannot read it properly okay and the finally you also have the temperature effects now if the temperature increases this will cause the pressure coil resistance to also increase okay and it will also call the spring to also weaken so what you have here, you have the reading. Let, let's let's look at this in this manner. So pressure coil resistance increases. So V by R value okay, has decreased. So for the same V, you get lesser I. Okay. So what you what that would happen is that the torque tau D has decreased because V by R has decreased. Okay. On the other hand, you have k theta, tau d is equal to k theta, okay, but if with temperature, if k decreases, then what you have here is that k decreases, so theta will increase for the same, for the same uh, uh, tau, theta will increase and r, so r is increasing with temperature. V by R is decreasing with temperature and K is decreasing with temperature. So for the same tau, theta will increase with temperature if V by R was constant. So they have due to temperature, you have two effects. One is in the resistance of the pressure coil. One is in the stiffness of the spring, but they act in opposition. And so the problem is that you really have no idea whether the effect of temperature will cause a lessening of the sensitivity or uh, heightening of the sensitivity of the wattmeter. So temperature is another effect with whose, whose effect is not really clearly determinable now. Okay, And since it is not clearly determined, the compensation is also not very easy to figure out. So the best thing to do is to not uh, very they call, um, um, operated in a manner such that the temperature doesn't change too much. Okay, now as you have seen earlier, uh, the 
when you have a wattmeter up here um, working in a low power factor case you need this compensation and this compensation becomes uh, not a compensation the correction factor becomes worse when there is low power factor okay and there are additional effects also in which case uh, because of which the normal watt meter configuration cannot be used in low power factor <coughs> applications okay uh, few of that is that now when you have a low power factor typically uh, because it is vi cos phi okay even when vi are high because of this cos phi tau d is low so you can so even with high voltage and high current the deflection is much less okay and in addition to this this pressure coil inductance can cause significant effects okay uh, and because of this uh, we need to have compensatory mechanism by which the errors are decreased and sensitivity is increased okay in a low power factor meter which was not a problem or which was not that much of a problem in case of a unity power factor watt meter okay so one is that so since since the low power factor meter is usually uh, applied in high current application you have to use the connection which is load side connection okay and now in order to and and say when it, there is a load side connection what you had was that the current flowing through the current coil was the total current through the load and the current through the pressure coil okay now the problem that we had there was there was a loss in the pressure coil okay or there was a loss in the pressure coil and that loss was seen and now what we want is that uh, and here what we are not assuming that v square by r is uh, constant so what we want is we want a compensating circuit so what is being done is that this is the moving part okay uh, of the pressure coil and this assembly and in series to this we connect another coil in phase opposition to the current coil okay so what the interaction that we have here the deflection to total deflection is the deflection of the pressure coil or the, the deflection produced do the pressure coil interaction with the current coil plus the pressure coil coils interaction with the series this thing say let us say pc1 okay so this one where you have this coil coming like this let me for now say this is pc1 this is uh, this is wound in series with the pressure coil and in phase opposition with the current coil okay so this would produce a deflection that is something proportional to v times i plus ip and since this is phase opposition this will have minus v into ip so you have a deflection that is proportional to v times ip okay that is produced that that is effectively the reading okay and uh, to further compensate for the pressure coil inductance you have this circuit with the capacitance okay and now what we need is that to we have to increase the sensitivity okay uh, to increase the sensitivity you lower the control torque that is you use a spring of lower spring constant so that for the same amount of torque a larger deflection is produced and 
you also decrease the overall series resistance value so this r value is again decreased so that your v by r value increases okay so with these with all these effects you can uh, make the lower power factor lpf instrument low power factor instrument work with more efficiency and more accuracy and more sensitivity okay and uh, as obvious as an engineer you would like to extract the maximum out of any particular instrument to be designed so by having multiple choices for the current coil connections and the pressure coil connections you can operate the same what meet the same instrument over multiple ranges you would have seen uh, such an application in the lab also where you have multiple choices for your connections okay and in the wattmeter can also be used in conjunction with the transformers current transformer and voltage transformers to operate to increase the range to operate at very high voltage and to take very high voltage and current very high voltage readings okay so these two so you can have the wattmeter here the wattmeter reading is taken and it is scaled up by the factor of the current uh, transformer and the voltage transformers and the wattmeter the what you call the uh, power consumption by the load can be computed okay uh, so you can use wattmeter to measure the phase the what you call the power consumed in the in polyphase circuits also using blondel's theorem uh, i would not like to go through this because this is not really the point of it you can refer to the text i'll just browse through the slides okay so basically if you have n conductors uh, carrying power then you can use n wattmeters to measure the overall power consumed by the polyphase load or if you choose one of the conductors one of the power conductors to be a point of uh, to, a, to be a common point you can even do it with n minus one wattmeters okay so in case of a three phase supply you can either use three watt meters two watt meters or in case of balanced load you can even use one watt meter okay there is a three watt meter case uh, and this is a two watt meter case in a star connector or delta connector load okay and this is one watt meter case where you change the connections and use the same watt meter okay and in case of a balanced load you can even use one watt meter or a two watt meter and take the two readings and from those two readings you can find the uh, power factor of the load however it is necessary that this is a balanced load okay and in case of three phase supply you can even have a three phase watt meter and um, you can uh, so in, what you basically do is that you are emulating two watt meters together so let's let, let me go to two watt meter case okay so so if you take if you leave out this part what you have here is you have three supply lines and you have two current coils connected okay and you have two pressure coils connected okay they should be connected here but that really matters okay so what you need what you are doing here you are making instead of two instrument you are making it into one instrument and you are making a mechanism here in the three watt meter case where <coughs> there are two elements two current coils and two pressure coils 
and the pressure coils the moving coil is mounted on a single spindle so that the deflection of both these mechanisms becomes additive okay and the current is as as i said it is the same as the the connections are the same as the two watt meter case okay and in order to isolate them magnetically so that the effect of one magnetic field doesn't affect uh, doesn't uh, transmit to other one they are isolated using a laminated iron shield so there is no interference okay and this is the typical uh, diagram for a three phase watt meter okay and uh, you can go through chapter 8 in chapter 10 of uh, ak sonia's book okay to understand the <coughs> topics that are covered in this uh, lecture okay in addition what i with that we actually come to the end of this lecture